What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. In today's episode, I thought we could talk about the one single act that will change your entire life. Sounds pretty loaded, right? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. That's intended to. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Clint's looking at me with complete curiosity right now, wondering what is about to come out of my mouth. <laughs> I think that's pretty typical anytime that we press the start button here up in the studio getting ready to record. Yeah, I, you know, that's how I like it. I like being thrown curveballs. I like to take that approach to things because, I mean, it really helps me think on my toes more. And it's not only good for me, I think, I hope it's good listening for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you remember back in 2014, and you might not remember that this took place in 2014 because it feels like that was so long ago, especially post-COVID time, but in 2014, there was an admiral by the name of William McRaven, and he gave a commencement speech where he was talking about the importance of making your bed every day. Yes, I do remember that. I was thinking about that commencement speech, and it came across my feed the other day, and it made me think about the compounding effect. And I was thinking about all of the little activities that I incorporate into my day and the importance of micro habits. And I started to put the relation between everything I'm doing financially with my business. And I talked about my business being an engine. There's all these different pieces and parts to this engine. And when we think about the compounding effect and how it relates to our everyday lives and not just the financial component of it, And I started to relate that commencement speech to to that very thing. I wanted to know what the root word of compound actually meant. And this is one of my new hobbies, I guess, because we only know the English language at such a minute surface level. And when we understand the root words and the Latin words and where the origin of words come from, it allows us to not only articulate our our framing of speech, but also for us to be able to dive a little bit deeper into our train of thought. Why are you smirking? <laughs> it's, it's so funny that you're talking about this. Yesterday, I was thinking about some random words that were just so odd. And when you say it, you, you know those words when you're, you're, you're saying it and repeating it to yourself and like, that's just a weird fucking word. <laughs> Have you ever repeated a word and then you question whether or not it's actually a valid word. <laughs> I'm still picking apart this word in my head. What is it? Unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, getting back to, to the context of our episode here. So when it comes to the word compound, the Latin root for it is actually to put together. And it made me think about all of these small little acts, so similar to the commencement speech, how we can do something that's so small and it seems so mundane and there's very little effort to it. But when we put together many elements of these small acts every single day, similar to how I have with my business, businesses, things that I do, ways that I make money, it actually is that very thing. It's these small little pieces that put together an entire engine. And I thought it was such a beautiful way to be able to further understand and dive into that commencement speech, because I think there are areas of all of our lives where we all too often focus on the big picture. And the big picture in this reference would be something like you make a bed and you just check the box and it's done for the day, right? Like that's your big act of service to yourself every single day. But when we think about microing it down into small, intricate pieces, those intricate pieces, you know, you take a nut and a bolt, for example, and of course this is metaphoric to the pieces of an engine, and it is it is something so small and it's so easy, so simple. And yet when we put it into the totality of something as as magnificent as an engine, and it is magnificent because there's so much power to it, not power in the physical sense, but power also in the ability of it to take you places that you want to go or discover places that you never knew that you wanted to. And I think it's important sometimes for us to be able to just pause and not just focus on the big picture. I talk a lot about having 
some way to be able to navigate. And the way that we do that is by focusing on our North Star, nor- knowing what that thing is that we want to achieve. But to get there, we need to stop and we need to focus on those baby steps. And within those baby steps are these small pieces. And when we start to pick up those small pieces and picking them up could be learning something new. It could be making a phone call, surfing a a website and diving into some information, watching an educational video, listening to, to a podcast, right? These are all nuts and bolts that will make up that engine. And I think that's important for us to be able to understand what that is and then put it into practice every single day. Yeah. And it's as you're speaking on this matter, like I think about if you miss one of those bolts in your engine, you feel off for the day, just like your car doesn't run right. It's something that if you've missed one of those micro habits in which you're doing every day, I've, I, I know this for me personally. I, if I don't do something, I feel off. For that entire day, just the same example as if your car's not running right, if it's missing that bolt. In saying that, I think that it's important for us to understand the mundane things that we do when we're feeling off. Because as you're saying that, the first thing that comes to my mind is if you didn't drink your coffee, you would be feeling off. Right? <laughs> yeah. But to allow ourselves the discipline to incorporate or even reincorporate the small nuts and bolts that maybe are missing or the small nuts and bolts that we're giving ourselves the BS excuses as to why we don't want to be able to execute on them. And then to make it so habitual to where those things start to feel like you are going without. And when we're able to do that and we make it a game, right? What if once a week you incorporated one new nut and bolt into your life And you did that consistently for an entire year. Could you imagine having the opportunity to, at the end of the year, reflect back on the 52 micro habits that you incorporated into your every single day that now became so habitual? What growth would exist in those 365 days if we all decided to do that on a regular basis? Yeah, I think it would be exponential. Like, I always, as as we sit here, I always... Ashley brings up these topics and I start thinking about different things in my own life, the how I can improve, how can I move forward with these steps. And and it's very simple to do, but very difficult at the same time. I know I'm kind of contradicting myself there, but it's just recreating those habits for yourself or creating those habits for yourself and making them habitual. I think that that compound effect that you're talking about, it moves forward in your everyday life so much more the more you're reaching your goals and how you want to complete them. Yeah. And we can go back and check out the episode that we published on April the 13th, where we talked about the two easies, right? And the two easies are the thing that is easy to do is also the thing that is easy not to do. And in reference to this commencement speech, it is incredibly easy for us to make our bed, especially if there's two of you, right? You you wake up in the morning, each grab the sheet and the blanket and pull it up. Like, how hard is that, right? But it's also easy not to do. And all of these micro habits that we're talking about or that we could envision incorporating, especially if we did the practice of doing one a week for 52 weeks and we did that consistently every year, then it's just monumental, What really kind of struck my mind with that too is in just like that Admiral's speech that you're, you're talking about in military, in law enforcement, um, where you have a, a, an academy that you go to, they're creating these habitual micro habits for you on a daily basis, whether it's polishing your boots, whether it's making your bed. I remember when I was in the corrections academy, we had to make up wake up and make our bed every morning. And it had to be that military style where the corners are tucked in and folded in and, and it turns into a normal practice that you do every day. And in law enforcement, it's the same thing. You put your boot on one, one foot at a time, but typically if most of you look at it, you always do the same shoe each time on the same foot. 
Yeah. And I would challenge us all to sit down and to list out 52 of those micro habits and to decide that today is the day where we want to start challenging ourselves because whether it's police, fire, military, you know, whatever, whatever it is, the main element that is being taught is discipline. And when we can't have self-discipline, then we, number one, we shouldn't be preaching that to anybody else, right? Be it children or anybody that we might be a leadership role above or, or over um, in a workplace or or anything. And yet we always want to, <laughs> right? We always want to be the people that will say like, no, you should do it this way. When in reality, a lot of the times those people aren't doing it themselves. So I encourage us all to make the list, 52 micro habits, start today, plan out your, your year, plan out the rest of your life, and just realize that these small habits, these compounding effects, you know, the root word for compound means to put together. And that's because eventually you'll be putting together the engine that you desire. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.